Hello everyone on our channel. Today practice 4 is the first lesson in the physiology of muscle tissues. As always, uh, we will discuss the theory and watch the video on our page in Moodle and I will leave links on uh, a lot of YouTube channels, a lot of information, very interesting video files but uh, about muscle muscle tissue is divided into stated uh, these are skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle tissue and of course smooth muscle we will consider is uh, each of them in details but now uh, let's talk about the general functions of muscle tissues. At first, movement, uh, body position and stability, uh, communication, body passage control and heat production. Also, there are, um, for all tissues, muscle tissues, we have some properties excitability, conductivity, contractility, extensibility and elasticity, how you see on this slide. But then uh, uh, this slide shows general difference in muscle tissues and I want to note the ability to cardiac and mouse muscle uh, uh, and cardiomyocyte to contract and voluntary. For skeletal muscle it is possible only voluntary contraction and the building of these tissues is different and we will discuss about this in the future. Next slide about properties of muscle tissues. Among these muscles there are difference in the duration of contraction and refractoriness. Skeletal muscle, first slide, um, part of the slide, about uh, have a high contraction rate and short refractoriness. It is a period of insensi insensitivity to nerve stimulus. Uh, the second cardiac muscle, uh, cardiac heart muscle, uh, in the second place, and smooth muscle. Uh, it has uh, very long time for contraction and uh, there are refractory uh, for a long time, long time. Uh, now let's look at each of the tissues separately. For the majority of this lesson we will be discussing skeletal muscle, but let's start with the smooth muscle. The slide shows the structure of the smooth muscle tissue and there is a link to a uh, video uh, about this tissue. As always, I will leave links to the video in the description. But first, slide of about physiology of smooth muscle. You can read the text, mainly of them we have already discussed. So let's move on the next slide. If we, uh, if we talk about the features of the reduction mechanism and mechanism how all this process start, uh, we have some numbers of uh, singularity uh, and at first the calcium enters the cells by pinocytosis. Sometimes the contraction can be caused by a hormone activity, for example oxytocin. It activates, it activates the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmatic reticulum uh, complex and uh, presents the enzyme, special enzyme uh, light chain kinase. But about contraction uh, we will discuss uh, uh, shortly later. Uh, next slide. Let's look at the heart muscle. Here you see a photo from the immunoscanning microscope very clearly visible striation and contractive proteins 
you see the actin uh, red colored and myosin green colored and even blue nuclear uh, in a cells. Um, um, next slide. There are two types of cells, cardiomyocytes, that make up the muscular wall of the heart and contract pacemaker cells, general, uh, generate electrical impulse. Uh, it is a potential, potent, action potential for the heart. Next slide, you see it is a muscle for contraction and special muscle cells which can't contract but generate electricity uh, and we will study the function of pacemaker uh, in the section of physiology it is the second final lesson uh, about cardiovascular physiology uh, but now, uh, uh, consider the device of cardiomyocytes you see some um, describe like skeletal muscle cardiac muscle is striated you see cardiomyocytes have a single nuclear uh, nucleus skeletal muscle usually have multiply nuclei cardiomyocytes are shorter shorter than skeletal muscles um, Cardiomyocytes closely connect with each other through discs and cardiomyocytes have a high density of mitochondria. Slide. Next slide. As a result you see the function features and uh, next one all features in one slide you see. All cells in a um, um, cardio muscle are connected by special disc, intercalated disc, you see. And let's look at this disc. All the cells in a muscle are connected special disc. There are three types of uh, three types of structures in this disc. You see one. Two, three, and uh, desmosomes, gap junction, gap junction, and fascia adhesive. These parts uh, have different function, and let's look uh, on the desmosomes. Uh, desmosomes, at first, it is a term. Term desmosome came from the Greek words uh, desmo bonding and body soma. Desmosomes serve as anchor points to bring the cardiac muscle fibers together. And let's uh, look on this place um, how you see some proteins connect different cell membranes together and there are the intercellular spice, little spice, very, very short and little. Uh, junction, one more junction. Adherent junction, in addition to desmosomes and to connect, to help to connect two uh, cells together, uh, but is a different way. You see one Mm, one the cell membrane and uh, the spice between these two membranes and uh, you see special protein between and one more uh, jab junction special channels for um, for uh, ions for electricity and uh, you see two membranes from two from cell one same cell two and how it works we will discuss about it um, late so two first formation connect cardiomyocytes and last one um, uh, for movement of ions and action potential. The next slides uh, 
describe the structure of myofibrils and sarcomeres, but we will uh, consider this material using the example of skeletal muscles. But the image uh, is very uh, interesting, uh, it's new technique for showing um, intercalated discs, you see green and different parts of the cells of uh, with a different color and you see the myofibril uh, almost the same like a myofibril of a skeletal muscles and we, uh, we see the structure this part sarcomeres, uh, but we will consider this material using the example of skeletal muscles. The some following photo and slides describe the contraction mechanism, but uh, we'll discuss uh, this material as usual using the example of skeletal muscles too. And I just move uh, the next slides the molecular mechanism uh, is uh, very similar and some more information about muscle uh, regeneration uh, less than 50 percent of cardiomyocytes regenerate and renew themselves during a person life very very small uh, quantity. For this there are special progenitor cells, some, uh, some time, type of uh, stem cells. And um, smooth muscle has the best um, regeneration in our body and the body of animals. And finally we go to the device of skeletal muscle and function and abilities is at first we have already dis uh, discussed uh, for first excitability you know also call it responsiveness or irritability ability to receive and respond to a stimulus contractivity activity ability to shorten then and uh, uh, a quiet stimulus uh, is reserved. Extensibility and elasticity, you know, these abilities. And let's move on the next slide. And now we need to discuss the device and uh, muscle contraction. Uh, muscle are surrounded by a large amount of connective tissues and each of these uh, parts have special name you see endomysium, perimysium, epimysium and a lot of fascium around so tightly connected to the bone uh, to the bone and, uh, and at the microscope level uh, microscop microscopic level each muscle cell consists of uh, organelles myofiber so we have the muscle fiber it is a big cell uh, with a, a lot of nuclei and uh, we have uh, like uh, organelles this tubes my fiber I like this micro photo a lot of tubes in one cells but without nuclear my fibrils uh, are made up to sarcomeres this is the area between two Z discs the disc actin filaments and proteins of the sarcomere structure are attached to them. Here you will find light actin protein and dark myosin protein groups. Uh, the H zone is separated by uh, the actin filaments in the relaxed states of the sarcomere. And next slide, you see the photo, it's a gistology uh, with the light lines. It is a protein 
uh, actin and blue one myosin uh, like you see thick and thin filaments and it is a real estrated uh, which is why these uh, uh, muscles are called straight, uh, you see, mm, smooth. Cross the section uh, showing uh, uh, six actin molecules around a myosin molecule. Increase the size, uh, uh, we see uh, each molecule, it is actin and a lot of protein which connect with actin uh, uh, molecules and myosin molecules too in a sarcomere. Uh, molecules in a sarcomere actin makes up 20-25 percent, uh, myosin uh, 55-60 percent and uh, we have tropomyosin 10-15 percent uh, and troponin molecules 4 6 percent each mass in molecule has a tail a tail uh, with which forms the core of the thick myofilaments plus the head that project out from the core on the of the filament this myosin heads are also commonly referred to as cross bridge. So the myosin heads have several important characteristics. It has ATP binding sites into which feed molecules and ATP you know it is the energy, potential energy in a cell. It has actin binding sites into which feed molecules of actin. Actin is a part of the thin myofilaments and will be dis used in more detail shortly. It has a handle at the point where it leaves the core of the thick myofilaments. This allows the head to swivel back and forth and the swelling is uh, as will be described shortly that actually cause muscle contraction. So we have these heads and ATP binding site it works like enzyme and can to uh, use the energy of ATP for movement. So let's look at everything under the height magnification. Uh, I want to uh, show you the thin uh, microfilaments, myofilaments and there are three types of protein you see and um, these proteins are uh, actin, G-actin, globe, tropomyosin and troponin. Uh, all these molecules are proteins. Two filaments of globular actin create a filament of F-actin. F-actin. Tropomyosin it's blue hair, blue hair uh, uh, is there. It's blue hair. It blocks direct contact between actin and myosin. And their types, uh, and there are three types of troponins. Troponins, troponin T, attached troponin complex to tropomyosin, I inhibits slow down the contract of myosin and actin and C binds calcium ion it causes conformations in tropomyosin molecule. Let's see the next slide you see these three types of troponin molecules the troponin molecules are called the troponin complex we examined several, several sarcomere proteins that are involved in contraction, but there are also additional proteins in the sarcomere. Their main function is to form the structure of the sarcomere. 
this include titan nebulin desmin and on the slide you see uh, where these proteins molecules connect uh, with the different parts of sarcomere in the slide you see the location in the sarcomere structure and next slide the slide shows the structure under height magnification besides that there are customer complex customer complex of proteins of course which fixes everything to the fibril membrane here are some more proteins here are some more proteins you can learn more about the structure of sarcomere and the proteins inside the sarcomere in a links uh, to the video i have the link uh, in the description uh, and uh, one more slide we go to the next slide here the image uh, of an important structure of the marfabril is the sarcoplasmatic reticulum you see the net this network uh, of gray pipes and the next slide oh, we see this uh, color it like a blue light blue the sarcoplasmatic reticulum is closely related to the sarcolemma it is gray one move down into sarcolemma move down through inside the cell and uh, specifically to another structure in a cell called the sarcoplasmatic reticulum the sarcolemma has holes you see uh, these holes lead into tubes these tubes called uh, transverse tubes or T tubes for short these tubes pass down into the muscle cell and go around the myofibrils here they are in a purple and blue tubes of sarcoplasmatic reticulum and next slide even better to show contact through the T tubes and sarcoplasmatic reticulum this is a point of contract is uh, represented by a triad of components why is this place so important important for contraction of the muscles the primary function of the sarcoplasmatic reticulum is to store calcium ions the membrane of the sarcoplasmatic reticulum is well equipped to handle calcium there uh, are pumps special pumps active transport uh, this transport use the atp energy AT, uh, atp uh, molecules for energies for pumps calcium inside the sarcoplasmatic reticulum uh, so calcium is it uh, constantly being pumped into the sarcoplasmatic reticulum from the cytoplasm of the muscle cells as a result it, in a relaxed muscle there is a very high concentration of calcium in the sarcoplasmatic reticulum and a very low concentration in uh, the sarcoplasm in addition the membrane has special openings or gates for calcium in a relaxed muscle the gates are closed and calcium cannot pass through the membrane so the calcium remains in the sarcoplasmatic reticulum however if the impulse travels along the membrane of the sarcoplasmatic reticulum um, the calcium hates open and therefore calcium diffuse rapidly out from the sarcoplasmatic reticulum into the sarcoplasm where the myofibrils and myofilaments are located this as you will see is a key the first step uh, in muscle contraction and uh, here we see the triad and channels for calcium and next slide 
Why is the calcium so important? Calcium ions is the trigger of muscle contraction mechanism. The active potential that uh, was transmitted by the nerve fibers move deep into the muscle. Uh, move deep into the muscle fibers through the system of T tubes. You see here. A receptor protein, special receptor protein, senses the membrane depolarization, alerts conformation, and activates reanodine receptors. Uh, this one uh, that relies calcium from the sarcoplasmatic reticulum move. After contraction, calcium is pumped back. Uh, always we use the ATP energy for move calcium inside um, sarcoplasmatic reticulum. This process takes place using the energy uh, active transport. There is a special protein that uh, 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 just keep the calcium inside. You see calcium in a living organism, this process is cycling, just cycling, but after death, ATP is not formed in the body, which means that calcium will not be pumped inside the sarcoplasmatic reticulum, and uh, this is manifested by uh, retral mortis, and if you want to know what is this, um, you can just watch the video. I leave uh, uh, a link to the video that explains this process. So, we have discussed uh, all the structures of the muscle fiber. And now let's look at the mechanism of muscle contraction. Everything starts with active potential that comes from the nerve system central nerve system along the nerve fiber. Uh, next practical about nerve fiber. So this point, the point of contact between two tissues is called the neuromuscular junction or just neuromuscular synapse. We will soon study the structure of it in details, but now I leave links to the video. The structure has a presynaptic membrane, postsynaptic membrane, and synaptic space. Synaptic space. The transmission of the electrical signal is not direct. There, uh, there are the special molecules, the substance acetylcholine. It is a mediator molecule that is syn synthesized and accumulates in the vesicles of the presynaptic end. Then an action potential as applied, uh, this vesicles connect to, to the presynaptic membrane and acetylcholine molecules, you see for the short, uh, pass through the spice and contact with the receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. And the membrane becomes permeable to sodium ions and action potential um, okay, you see, uh, and action potential is formed on the different tissues, uh, not only in the muscle tissues. This contact can be through the different tissues in the body. And then the potential goes to T-tubes. This is uh, what the connection look, uh, look like in the body. In the fibers, in the fibers, there we see the branching of the nerve fibers, axons of the motor neuron. Uh, one more uh, is uh, how it is uh, really in the muscle fibers. You see these parts, this junction. And next one slide. 
the slide has a very short description of the mechanism of muscle contraction, but we will consider it in details. And the next slide, you see the first one. Because the skeletal muscle is voluntary muscle, contraction requires a nervous impulse. So, first step in contraction is when the impulse is transferred from the neuron to the sarcolemma of a muscle cell. The second one, the impulse travels along the sarcolemma and down the, the tubes. From the tubes, the impulse passes through the sarcoplasmatic reticulum, this place, you know. As the impulse travels along the sarcoplasmatic reticulum, the calcium gates in the membrane of the sarcoplasmatic reticulum open. As a re result, calcium diffuse out uh, of the sarcoplasmatic reticulum and among the myofilaments. Myofilaments. So ne next slide. This part. Calcium fills the binding sites in the troponin molecules. As I noted previously, these are a large the shape and position of the troponin, which in turn causes movement of the attached tropomyosin molecules. Movement of tropomyosin permits the myosin heads to contact actin. Contact with actin causes the myosin heads to swell. Uh, you see the movement of uh, heads during the survival. The myosin heads is firmly attached to actin. So when the head swells, it puts the actin, and therefore the enter thin myofilaments forward. How do we can see this a cycle of movements? And all actin my, uh, um, thin filaments move to the M line. Of course, one myosin head cannot pull the entered thin uh, myofilaments. Many myosin heads are swiveling together. Or nearly so, the, their con the collective efforts are enough to pull the entered thin my myofilaments. At the end uh, of the swelling, ATP feeds into the building site of the cross bridge, and this breaks the bond between the cross bridge myosin and actin. The myosin head then swells back. As a result, the head is once again bound firmly to actin. However, because the head was not attached to actin, then it swelled back. The head will bind to a different actin molecule. Once the head is attached to actin, the cross bridge again swells. So, step 7 uh, is repeated. Repeated until we have the ATP as long as calcium is present attached to troponin. Step 7 through 9 will continue. And as they do, then thin myofilaments in, uh, is being pulled. But the myosin heads of the thick myofilaments, thus the thick and thin my, uh, myofilaments are actually sliding past each other, like this slide shows. You see, like fingers. As this occurs, the distance between the Z discs of the sarcomere decrease. As sarcomeres get shorter and myofibril of course get shorter too. The muscle fibers and enter muscle get shorter. Skeletal muscle reflex when the nervous impulse stops and then start be all muscles start be relaxed. Not impulse means that the membrane of the sarcoplasmatic reticulum is not longer permeable, permeable to calcium. Uh, no impulse means that the calcium gates 
uh, close. So calcium not longer diffuse out. The calcium pump in the membrane will not transport the calcium back into the sarcoplasmatic reticulum. Uh, as this occur, calcium ions leave the building sites, binding sites of the troponin molecules. Without calcium, troponin returns to its original shape and uh, position as does the attached tropomyosin. This means that tropomyosin is not back in position in contact with the myosin head. So the myosin head is not longer in contact with actin and therefore the muscle stops contracting and start be relaxed. Here you see some uh, shapes of the sarco uh, sarcomeres and uh, I will leave the links to the video files and uh, the description of this process. Here you see. And um, now that we have seen the contraction of the sarcomer and myofibrils, and um, all description of this process and um, let's see the reflex let's look at the reflex you see a reflex arc a reflex arc is a pathway that controls a reflex and vertebrates most sensory neurons do not pass directly into the brain but synapse in a spinal cord, just through the spinal cord. This allows for faster reflex action to occur by activating spinal motor neurons. Here you see, uh, without the delay of routine signals through the brain, everything looks not complicated, but we need to look at the next slide. Please, you see, we have already seen the neuromuscular junction, green colored one, but uh, there is still a muscle spindle and one more Golgi tendon organ. It turned out that there are infrastructural fibers in a skeletal muscle. Um, you see inf uh, intrafusal muscle fibers and intrafusal muscle fibers. They cannot contract. They don't have contractivity and don't have contractile elements, unlike an extrafusal uh, look at the part of spindle. But they have a double innervation, double, along some no fiber signals, some from the nerve system, and along others, uh, the muscle itself gives signals about its state, uh, or static, uh, static or dynamic. I leave the links to this question and we will discuss this reflex when we will study the uh, spinal cord and about the Golgi tendon uh, organ I leave the links so it is at first part of um, physiology of nerve muscle and uh, I have to you homework, your homework in a book animal physiology from genes to organism you should read the pages, some pages about muscle physiology. So uh, I will see you, I will hear you next time. Uh, and it is all for today. Bye bye.